Hi guys, so again I have to expose another false teacher and more false doctrine and this has to deal with eternal security and I know it's a very much needed you know videos and, and pages on my website that I need to start getting on eternal security but I'm only going to get to it when I get to it okay there's many many things that I want to get to and whenever I get to them is when I get to them but right now we're going to talk about at least one of these verses that people will use twist out of context to try to teach that people can lose their salvation so here's this pastor pastor of course he's got to have that on his name to feel special right it's not biblical but anyways pastor i don't know who he's a pastor of or, or what but, um shane brown okay this guy teaches conditional security that means that people can lose their salvation which is false. He, he came on my website and he tried to talk to me and tell me I was wrong about eternal security. And he told me to go watch one of his videos. So I did. And his video is disgusting, just like anybody trying to teach that you can lose your salvation. I said there's not one single verse in the entire Bible that teaches that somebody can lose their salvation. And there isn't. There's only verses that people can take out of context and twist. And eternal security is taught all throughout the Bible in many, 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 many verses. Okay, so they're, they're denying scripture they're denying that salvation is of the lord now all of a sudden salvation is uh, is is on man's part to continue in the word or, or whatever so i want to look at the first verses that he mentioned in the specific video that i watched and that is first corinthians 15 verses 1 and 2. so what we're going to see here is a verse that people will, will use to teach conditional security that a person who's saved can lose their salvation and so they'll say that there are these verses that, that have conditions. They'll have the word if. So if you do this, then you are saved. Or, or if you do this, then you'll stay saved. But if you don't do this, then you'll lose your salvation. Um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherewith you stand, by which ye are also are saved, are saved, if ye keep in memory, what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Okay, unless you have believed in vain. And I've used this verse a lot to show that there is a belief that is merely a mental assent where a person is never saved. This is what the easy believism people teach. They say you just believe the facts. You just believe God died for you and rose again, and then you're saved. You don't have to repent of your sins. You don't have to really turn to Christ and turn from your sin or anything like that. You just believe merely you know in your head and it's, and it's all good which is false that's what it means to believe in vain to believe in vain means that you really didn't believe with all your heart you, there was no root uh, you know the, the gospel didn't really take root there was no heart change it was just a it was just a surface level belief okay so by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you. So he tries to use this as a conditional security verse. So if you don't keep in memory what Jesus preached to you, then you lose your salvation. You know, well, this is really vague. I mean, what exactly do you have to keep in memory? How much of it? How much do you, you know, uh, or how long do you have to not keep it in memory? I mean... Can you be forgetful about things or whatever? You know, this is really vague, and they just they just they want to teach their false doctrine, and they'll take things out of context, however they want to. So, but usually they'll say like, if you deny the faith or something. So a person professes that they're a Christian, and they they go to a building called a church or whatever for a year or something, and now all of a sudden they're an atheist, and they don't want anything to do with God. You know, then they lost their salvation. But we know that they never really truly were saved. Okay. They never were saved. They showed themselves that way. And so I'm trying to think of a good comparison, some way that I can really help you to understand this. And so it says, you know, by which you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. This does not mean that staying saved or being saved is contingent upon a person believing or keeping in memory what Jesus taught them, okay? So, you know, Jesus said, whoever believes in me, uh, you know, will have everlasting life. We know that it's just by grace through faith, okay? But that faith does include, uh, you know, obedience from the heart and turning from sin to Christ. But salvation happens in a moment, okay? So, 
I'm trying to think of an example, and I'm thinking, like, let's say there's a kid who's upset at their parent or something, like their dad doesn't come to a basketball game or something. And uh, so, you know, the kid's, like, really, really upset. And then the father's like, well, I'm sorry. And the kid's like, well, if you're sorry, then you'll come to my next game. Okay. And then let's say that the father comes to the next game. So does that mean that the father wasn't really sorry until he went to that game? Or does that mean that him going to that game showed that he was really sorry when he said he was sorry? This is just now proof because, you know, he, his actions changed. So this is proof. So he says, you know, if you are sorry, you'll do this and that. So does that mean that, you know, them being sorry is contingent on that? Does that mean that, that them doing such thing is proof that they were sorry? So I think that, I hope that you can understand that. So, so if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, if you hold fast to the faith of Christ, then that shows that you were genuine when you became a believer, okay? When you professed Christ, when you confessed Christ, when you got baptized or whatever, you were true because we look back and we see that people persevered through trials and tribulations and that proves that their faith was genuine at the moment of their conversion, okay? Not that they had to continue through these in order to somehow stay saved or somehow become saved. It's just that if you stick with us, it is proof that you were genuine. But if you leave us, then it shows that you believed in vain, that you never really were saved. So salvation is not conditional, you know, upon us it's it's not conditional to where we have to do something to maintain our own salvation once a person is born again they are indwelt by the holy spirit they have a new relationship with god they are the, they are the sons of god children of god and they have a new a changed life and they're a new creation okay and that doesn't change that's a done deal all right so these perverts are trying to say that salvation is really up to man's ability to keep their salvation. And if it was up to man's ability to keep their own salvation, then, you know, that would be impossible. And also, uh, you know, that's kind of like a work salvation. That's saying that salvation is based on uh, man's merits and everything else. So it's a bunch of nonsense. So if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, is proof that you were genuine when you confessed Christ. It's not something that you have to do to continue to be saved. Okay. But there will be more on this, but I hope that helps you understand these things. And thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.